Welcome to Ease on Third Baptist Church. Stay tuned for today's previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing to your life. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, we have breaking news. The breaking news is that the Ezion Fair Christian Community Academy has now had its first protest. I want you to look at our protest and I pray that God will bless you to understand that young people truly matter. Let's see it. matter black lives they do matter and we support you we believe that you have a great and a strong future and this is why we do what we do you're never too young to stand up for what you believe in congratulations to all of you and we thank you so very much Hi, this is Pastor Curry. I just experienced history in the making. Here at Ezion Fair Christian Community Academy, we have some great and stellar 
uh, scholars. And I am so grateful to God. So I want to just take a moment as we are going through this video that we have for you. I just want to take a moment and introduce you to Amir Gibbs as well as Taylor Carpenter. These are the two people who were like the brains, the mind, and the conscious behind what we just experienced. We're going to ask you, Taylor, first. Tell us what you're thinking. What, 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 what made you decide to ask to have this march and this rally? Because I knew that, like, I heard that police were choking people down and killing people, and that's not right to do. Right. So what did you want to do? You wanted to hear your voice. So tell me, tell me why you wanted to do this then, beyond just hear, knowing that. Because I want... I, I just want the police to know that we can't do this and it's not right. Right. Oh, good. Amir, I heard that you said that there are some good cops and there are some bad cops. But tell me what you feel about cops. They, they, shouldn't, they, should, they shouldn't hurt people. They, they, should, they should first ask them the, some questions if they, if they saw something about the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Now, do you think there are some good cops or are all the cops bad? Some cops are good and some cops are bad. So how do you know the difference between the two? Because I know, because each cop has, has a different stage. So if, if a cop, if a cop, if a cop ha pulls out his gun right before, right before he, he asks you something, that's a bad cop. And if he, if he asks you something before he pulls out his gun, that's the good cop. Because he's thinking, right? Yes. So, Teller, um, how old are you, Teller? Seven. You're seven years old. So, Teller, have you experienced any bad cops? Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. When, because it was probably right next to my school, I think I saw some, no, it was my old school, uh, Wilmington Day, Day School, uh, and it was my dad's friend, uh, uh, sister, and I think it was with her other sister, but it was these bad cops that were doing like mean things, but she didn't mean, cause she, I think she was talking on the phone without her, uh, oh, driving in without her seatbelt on, but like she, she like forgot, she was just trying to pull around the corner so she can pick up her sister and she forgot, she was just telling her sister that she was on the way and these cops pulled her over and was like, like was being really mean to her and I think pulled out his, uh, his or hers gun. Does that make you feel bad? Yeah, because I, I was, uh, I was like, just worried because I, I don't get how you can't, she was telling her if, she didn't tell her, she wouldn't knew that that was uh, her. So I think that was, that was some bad cops that, and I don't think they even let her explain what happened. Mm. You know, it's very important that we take time and talk to our young people because they are aware. Traumatic experiences happen so much around the country. Our young people have to live through seeing their parents, their uncles, their aunts being mistreated. We don't believe that every cop is a bad cop. My father served as a police officer for almost 40 years, and I know there are some good cops, but there are some very bad cops. And those who do not value the lives of African Americans are making a grave mistake. We've been through so much, and even though we've been through so much, we still survived. We still will always make it. This whole Black Lives Matter it matters. This whole movement, it matters. And I'm just glad that we have Amir and we have Teller who are part of our academy, who have a conscious and who want their voices to be heard. We may not have been large like some of the other protests, but the police did show up because we wanted them to know that we believe that there are some good cops and some bad cops, but we asked them to behave themselves and to conduct themselves as productive citizens. I'm gonna take a break here and then I'm gonna come back with one of our teachers who helped to organize this event. God bless you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ebony Jervy and I am a teacher here at the E. Zion Fair Christian Community Academy. And during one of our afternoon circle time meetings, my friend Taylor came to me and expressed how she did not appreciate all that was going on in the world with the brutality and the violence. And she wanted to do a protest her way. We took it to the director and he said yes. 
I think it's important for us to hear our children out and understand that they have a voice too, no matter how big, no matter how small. They made their own signs, they asked questions, and we answered them. A funny story, Taylor was explaining to me about George Floyd, correct, is that his name? Mm -hmm. I said to Taylor, why should I care? He's not my cousin, he's not a famous actor, he's not a basketball player, so why should I protest? for someone that I don't even know. What was your response? Why should we do this? Because even though he wasn't somebody famous, and he was he was still, I think, a black person that still needs to be served the way that he needs, like, he needs to be treated like other people. So, so we should protest for him, and like, not for just people that are famous, and, and if, and you should know that other people are are famous when even though if they're not famous it doesn't matter but still after somebody that you don't even know uh, was not famous and they die for just something they they end up getting famous so you will and so if you wouldn't say hey George Floyd brother died you would know hey George Floyd was was uh, famous because he died, maybe his brother will be famous. Very good. Today, we had a protest, and at the protest, I asked Amir, this is Amir, about cops. And his response to me was so profound. He said, every cop has something inside of them. Some of the good cops have a heart of light. And this is coming from a, what, seven-year-old? How old are you, Amir? Seven. A seven-year-old. A seven-year-old. This is why it is important as us as educators, mothers, fathers, any young person in your life, talk to them. Explain to them. Get on their level and let them understand that their voices are to be heard no matter how young they are. I have two seven-year-olds next to me and it makes me emotional because I see greatness in the both of them. These babies are our future and we must continue to do our part and that's why I am here and that's why the staff of East Zion Fair Christian Community Academy pours in daily so that we are creating greatness throughout this academy. I wanna thank you all for your time. Thank you for just allowing these babies to come on and give you some light and we appreciate you. Anything you wanna say? Uh, yes. What are you gonna tell people? Uh, you should always stay safe and hey, if you see a, a police officer come into your house and just pull their gun out right away, you should talk to them about something and say, hey, I, I need you to hear something and let me tell you something. These two young kids did something so you can act more nice. So I need you to, I want you to probably Next time you want to barge into my house, I need you to think. Thank you, Taylor. Anything you want to say, Amir? Every every cop needs to needs to even learn his lesson and and become a good cop, not a bad one. Every cop needs to learn something about goodness and not demonness. Amen. Thank you for your time. Now we'll close up this opportunity that we've had with you today. And I pray that you all really got the message that we were trying to with all of the footage and all of the demonstration that just occurred. I want you to spend time talking to your children. This is a great example for why we need to start the conversation at home. Because here's the truth. There are only two types of people in this world. Those who are racist and those who are anti-racist. There are no in-between people. If you are racist, sure, you don't believe that black lives matter. If you are, if you are racist, sure you believe that you are, in, you are superior and we are inferior. But if you are anti-racist, that means you will speak out against everything and every person who tries to belittle, degrade, or uh, make less those who are from the African descent. I really hope that we have given you something to think about today. These are my children, and we thank God for our teacher as well. We pray that you really got something, and do, do me a favor today. Have a conversation with your children. Let them know what happened to George Floyd was wrong. It was not only wrong, but it was criminal, and we cannot stand for it. 
if these children are having this type of conversation, then it's time for you to have it around your table for those of you who are watching. Until the next time we come together, this is Ezion Fair Christian Community Academy saying so long. Bless you, God bless you. This is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Ezai and Fair Baptist Church here in Wilmington, Delaware. What a joy, what a privilege it is once again for us to come together. Saints, I just want to tell you something. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Do you trust the Lord today? Do you trust the Lord today? We may have still be in this whole COVID situation. Things are going on in our streets, but God is saying to all of us, greater is the one that's inside of you than everything that is around you. I want to thank you and personally greet you and say thank you for being a part of the Ezion Fair time of broadcast. This broadcast is dedicated to all of you who love the Lord, all of you who want to get closer to the Lord. We thank God for all of you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for our music ministry as they're going to bless us with a selection at this time. God bless you. Can we just begin to meditate on the Lord this morning? Think about what the word says, that life and death is in the power of your own tongue. Whatever you want, whatever you need. The Bible says that if you speak it, it'll happen. If you have faith and believe and stand on the promises of God, whatever you decree into the atmosphere will take place according to the will of the Lord. Anybody believe that this morning? Does anybody really, really know that deep down inside? That if I have faith, that if I say it, it's going to happen by the power of the Lord God. I shall have, I shall have what I believe, what I decree. Yes, I believe, yes, I believe it belongs to me. It belongs. I shall have, I shall have, what I decree, what I decree, I do believe, yes I believe, it belongs to me, it belongs One more time. to me, say I shall have, come on talk to yourself I this morning, I shall have, what I decree, what I decree, I believe, yes, I believe, it belongs to me, it belongs to me, oh, I shall have, I shall have, what I decree, what I decree, I believe, yes, I You need to yeah. speak into the atmosphere. I shall have, I shall have what I decree, what I decree. I do believe, yes, I believe. I believe, yes, I believe, it belongs to me, it belongs to me, so I'm going to speak into the atmosphere, so I'm going to speak into the Speak into the atmosphere. 
say speak it 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 declare 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 it speak 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 it declare 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 it it's mine it's mine mine here it's mine my joy is mine my peace is mine my deliverance is mine my breakthrough is mine it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine I'll have it it's mine yes it's mine it's mine it's mine today it's mine 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 so I'm gonna speak into the atmosphere come on and speak into the atmosphere speak into the atmosphere open up your mouth and speak to the Lord speak into the atmosphere shall have I shall have what I decree what I decree I believe yes I believe it belongs to me it belongs to me for I shall have I shall have what I decree I decree Open my mouth and speak into the speak atmosphere. Into the atmosphere. Come on and speak into the atmosphere. Speak into the atmosphere. Speak into the atmosphere. Speak into the atmosphere. bless you god bless you god bless you once again what a joy it was for the music ministry to bless us with that selection and at this time i want to make sure i bring a few things to your announcement to your, your attention number one as you will see on your screen we will have our 5 a.m prayer every wednesday and every sunday this morning the lord blessed us tremendously i tell you every week we have at least two to three hundred people on that prayer call god is moving people are meditating on and contemplating on what god is doing and it's blessing their lives I pray that you would join us. Call the church if you don't have the access to that, and I'm sure they would give it to you. Don't forget on Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights, I'm sorry, Thursday nights, we have our Bible study, our Zoom Bible study. If you don't have access, call the church, 302-652-9114, and the church will certainly give you the access information so you will be able to get into our Zoom. We are having some wonderful time, a great time in the Lord in our Bible studies, and I don't want you to miss being a part 
part of the Bible study experience here at Ezion Fair. For those of you who don't know this, we are now opening up the church on just Wednesdays. If you want to come in and pray, if you want to come in and lay on the altar, if you want to come in and talk to the Lord, we've already instructed our cleaning crew that Wednesdays we will, we will re-sanitize the church every Wednesday, but from one until three, we have opening up the church. There are some who really need to be able to go into the presence of the Lord in the place and in the space where we have deemed and reserve for the Lord dwelling. And I pray and hope that you will use this opportunity to come and just lay before the Lord and just talk to the Lord as we're now preparing ourselves to return to the sanctuary. We're not quite there yet, but I do want to make sure we open up the doors so that for those of you individually, we won't have strong gatherings. We won't have crowds. All we will have is just you. If you want to come and pray and, and, and talk to the Lord and meditate, the church will be open and available to you. Don't forget about Father's Day. Father's Day is coming. It's right around the corner. And I want to make sure, I want to make sure that each of you get an opportunity to bless your father. We have not gotten in the level of, of responses that we were looking for. And I hope that you will send into the church right now. Send into the church your tribute to your father. All we need is a picture and just a few words and we will honor your father. We look forward to it. I'm going to honor my father. I think I have the greatest father in the world. And I'm sure little Ashley is going to honor her father because I know she got the greatest father in the world. God bless you today. Let, now, now, before we go into the word of God, I want to talk to you about the, fine, the, the offering today. I just every week get on and I share with you how I'm blessed and I'm privileged to pastor a people who really make sure their pastor does not have to ask others to, to, to join in. But I want to thank so many of you. We are seeing the, the, those of you who are, are, are sending in your offerings, your tithing. Thank you. I think it would be a bad person. I would be less than a pastor not to acknowledge the fact that many of you are sending us offerings, whether they are large or small. There is no little in God's sight. God honors your gift. He loves a cheerful giver. For you to take the time to cash app us, for you to take the time to send us in something in the mail, we say thank you. To the Ezion and Fair Church family, we thank you. We're doing more now than we were doing even before COVID-19 hit. Why? Because the Lord said if you store up in the in the winter, when the summer come, you will be able to, to blossom and be and be full and rich. And listen to me carefully. The Lord has blessed and we thank God for all of you. So at this time, I ask that you remember the forms in which we do our tithing and our offerings and no, 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 no man at Ezai and Fair will rob God because we are tithers and we trust God. At this time, it's now time for the word of God. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will stand forever. And this is what I believe with all my heart. God's word will stand forever. So listen to what the word of the Lord has to say. We've been in this series. This is the third message. And I've so far, I've been enjoying it with you. But don't forget before I forget that we are starting at nine o'clock today. I'll drive in. Make sure you're here because it's going to be on. As the young folks say, it's going to be on and popping. So I'm looking forward to you being with us. Let's see what the Lord has to say. God bless you. And now God, as we stand behind the sacred desk to declare the word of God to the people of God, we pray, oh God, you would speak in the atmosphere. Speak peace to a wearied soul. Speak joy to a downtrodden soul. God, speak deliverance to a bind up soul. Lord, we pray now that you would speak in this atmosphere. Lord, we came out today to worship and magnify your name. But God, while we are worshiping and magnifying your name, there are some needs on our prayer list. And we pray today, God, that you would see the needs and begin to supply in the name of Jesus. We thank you now. Give us the word today, God. Let it help us that we may be effective in our walk with you. And Lord, at the end of the day, your will be done in our lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Saints of God, this is the last Sunday that we will deal with this series it seems like i'm going series to series to series 
And the Lord said, I'll let you close it on this one because next week we're going to start dealing with prayer as we're going into the summer months and I'm watching the, 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 the temperature of our church. I want to make sure that I keep the temperature of being fed with the appropriate spiritual medication. Amen. So, so, so enjoy today as we are finishing up the series, I'm lifting my life by. The first week we said we are lifting our life by um, strengthening our hearts. And, and I pray that as you are trying to become a better Christian, that you will begin to search your heart and look into your heart to see whether or not you're really reflecting the things of God. Oftentimes, we don't ask ourselves the question, how will my decision affect the kingdom of God? Because that's where your heart makes decisions. So I pray that you have taken that word. Then after that, we talked about the crazy cycle, breaking the crazy cycle. Many of of us and maybe not you who's sitting before me but I know I did I came up in a very crazy cycle generation my family was messed up but thanks be to God where he is able to break generational curses I know I know I'm by myself but I know there may be one or two other people in here who know that God can break a generational curse there are some things that's like there are some blessings in families look at every Jackson can sing that's a blessing every whining can sing that's a blessing but then there are some curses in families as well but what we got to do is we got to stay before God and we got to say God I can't be what my family was I got to be who you want me to be so we got to pray that God will break these crazy cycles and then last week we came back and we talked about trust we got to learn how to trust God God will issue us some things in our lives and we're not going to understand it look at your neighbor and say you're not going to understand it and, I'm, and, I'm, and I don't know whether you caught it last week but I want to give it to you this week there will be experiences that happen in your life you would have done the right thing and things will happen to you negatively but God God is saying to you today that you have to understand that he is strategic. He knows what he's doing, but what you got to do is learn how to trust him. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, learn to trust God. We trust Pastor Curry. We trust Chairman Allen. We trust all these people. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. You even trust the pew that you sitting in. Ain't nobody up in here worrying about whether that pew going to fall down. You leaning on it. You sitting all your weight on it and ain't no stress in your life about where you sitting God is saying if you can trust me the same way I'll bring you through everything that you going through and then this week meet me in the book of Matthew and it seems like a Christmas story but but the Lord said this is the route I want to take today Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 in the new international version of the Bible listen to what it says when they had gone an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream get up he said take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt stay there until I tell you for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him get up he said take the child and his mama and escape to Egypt stay there until I tell you for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him today as we close out this series I want to talk from this thought strengthen my obedience come on look at your neighbor and say you need to strengthen your obedience y'all act like y'all come for entertainment you ain't gonna get no entertainment so look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm trying to help you strengthen your obedience to God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Like the life of faith, my brothers and my sisters, is a walk of obedience. Eugene Peterson once called faith a long obedience in a single direction every step of our lives the call of God remains the same which is for us to say yes to every step God orders not just the ones you like but every step that God orders we are not guaranteed that every step will be easy but we are assured that we won't have to take them 
alone. We're not promised that we'll always understand them, but we are assured that we will understand them better by and by. The call of God on our lives is to constantly and consistently strengthen our obedience to God. And nowhere is this better illustrated other than in the New Testament story of Joseph. Joseph had all was already a follower of God, but his life journey was constantly disrupted because of his obedience to God. Tell somebody you got to be obedient. It was after Joseph was overwhelmed with the news of Mary's pregnancy before they were married that an angel instructed him not to put her away in in dis quietly but to keep her because the child that was within her was a gift from God. So Joseph obeyed by swallowing his embarrassment, sidestepping his shame, and dismissing his pride and ego, and he kept her because God directed him to do so. Can I stay there for a moment? Too often when we don't understand what's happening, we're quick to make a move but God is saying if you really want me to help your life you got to learn to stop drop and roll in other words you got to learn to stop trying to solve it drop on your knees and roll before God until he gives you direction on what you need to do can I get a witness in here today obedience is a hard sermon to preach because most people think because I'm grown and on my own I can do what I want to do but when you signed up to be be a Christian you're not your own but your God's can I get a witness in here today believing that the worst was now behind them Joseph were, 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 was, was as forced at this point to face an unexpected tax bill which required that each citizen return to the ancestral home to be counted and taxed to finally arrive in Bethlehem and discover that all of the hotels were completely sold out. Mary then goes into labor and is forced to deliver her child in a barn in Bethlehem and after Jesus' birth the tone of the text seems to lead us to believe that they remained in Bethlehem hoping for more delightful days since he was obeying God just to be thrown into a context of tension and stress by the activities and actions of King Herod. You know my brothers and sisters in this Christian walk if it ain't one thing it's another and I know I know some preacher told you that once you give God your heart all your trouble will be away but I came to disclaim and say that once you give your heart and your total life to God yes your troubles will be away because you won't worry about the stuff that is around you because of the one that's inside of you can you help me preach a little bit today King Herod had issued brother Chairman had issued an order out of his insecurity to execute all of the male babies under the age of two years old but being warned in a dream Joseph was instructed by an angel to leave where he was and flee to Egypt somebody say Egypt this directive was difficult because their journey had already been strained financially mentally emotionally and physically but the life of the newborn child was being threatened by an environment that did not support his existence and their stewardship as parents required that in the that day 
dangerous environment that had that they had to protect provide and nurture their child i'm gonna stay there for a second as parents beloved we must always take action to ensure that all of our children are educated motivated directed and protected because many of them are growing up in an environment that does not support their existence they're living and breathing in an environment that assigns them a prison number when they can't read on a third grade level while in the third grade while cutting all of the educational support so that they can be in jail instead of in school oh y'all ain't gonna like that but that's exactly what they're doing in the society that we live in if your child can't read on a third grade level they start assigning them prison cells but somebody gotta put in their spirit that i can't let this world take my child from me because listen every Every child is not an A student but what we got to learn to fight for is for the C student and the D student because let me tell you let me tell you because this world have figured it out they gonna make sure certain children whether they are slow or fast make it but when you are poor African American when you are poor Latino they don't care whether you make it but God said if you can hear my voice learn how to speak up and speak out for your children somebody say speak out yeah 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 as parents as parents all of us must make sure that our children are educated don't keep coming to church looking for the pastor to give you a cliche or to support your spiritual gymnastic class learn how to look in your community and serve God through your community there are people who are big they're big they're big on making sure that when the text is read they look spiritual but listen what texts are people reading on your life Jesus said when I was hungry you fed me when I was naked you clothed me I ain't trying to tell nobody off but I feel it in my spirit we get so spiritual and stuff up by being in church but God is saying take yourself out of the church and bring yourself into Christianity and learn how to protect those who can't protect them listen the destiny the destiny of Jesus I didn't I didn't lose where I was but that was an email to tell somebody in here stop being so spiritually sound and no earthly good oh let's just pray on it no baby prayer faith without works is dead it's too many people praying ain't nobody working god is saying i i you yes you should pray but you need to put some elbow grease in it oh i got nobody to understand ha <laughs> ha uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of pastoring people who just want to deal with the aftermath. Listen, the warnings are sent to the church so we can get out there and do something before they make it law. Yeah, I, I give Councilman Wright credit because he was the one who championed the bill to get rid of the fact that you can't just get your, your child can't sign out of school at the age of 16 and nothing happened. Did you know that that was a direct hit to black people? Because the other folks gonna make sure their children stay in school. But I want you to know at some point get connected to the community that you come from. Get angry so that you can bow your knees and pray to God and say God give me direction it might not be comfortable it might not feel good but at the end of the day the will of God would have been done uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got you I feel you I feel you listen listen the destiny the destiny of Jesus required that his parents uh, obeyed the voice of God they couldn't just do or operate 
in any old kind of way. They couldn't just leave the fate of their child in the hands of some disconnected educator or a partisan politician, but they had to allow God to order their steps and their stops in order to protect their child and somebody my brothers and sisters God will direct you some of these times God will direct us to a season of hiding somebody say hiding for our own protection God will give us a season of hiding for our own protection because there are forces factors and foes for which the Lord must shield us from so we can survive but beyond their threats that won't to kill us I'm going somewhere Jesus Joseph and Mary outlast the threat of Herod in verse because he was obedient to God don't miss that point they outlast the threats of Herod because they were obedient to God in verse 13 Herod is a threat but by verse 19 Herod is dead oh I wish I had a Bible reading church let me go back and take a step back so you can catch what I just tried to say they God sometimes will hide you so that you can take care of what so he can take care of what's trying to kill you and listen to me if you look at verse 13 of our text Herod issues a threat he issues a threat that I'm gonna kill every male child but because of the obedience somebody say obedience because of the obedience of Joseph he was able to survive that threat because in verse 19 Herod the one who issued the threat is now dead they survived six verses of threats to arrive safely in the seventh verse of deliverance and all of us need to pause and celebrate the fact that God's purposes and plans for our lives have outlasted the threats that were put on our lives in other words they, they, there were some people and problems that posed a challenge to the direct will of God for our lives but God enabled us to outlast them can I get a witness in here there are people who can testify that on their job people tried to set them up but God helped you and you were able to outlive the boss that tried to take you out they succumbed but you survived they got fired but you got promoted they withered away but you worship your worries away they lost their influence but God gave you power all because God's protection was on your life and in the midst of God's protection they were proven false but God was your judge and God made a way out of no way and God proved you to be right you don't have to fight your battles all you got to do is stand still and obey the voice of God and when you obey the voice of God God will make everything all right Joseph Jesus and Mary are in Egypt now but before they can settle in Egypt an angel of the Lord comes back to Joseph I hope y'all paying attention when we dealing with obedience you got to stay in touch and in tune with the voice of God in your ear not the voice of your pastor not the voice of your deacons but the voice of God because God knows how to talk to you directly can I get a witness in here Joe goes back the, the angel comes back to Joseph and says now get up and go back home for the first time in Joseph's 
experience with God. Joseph was excited to obey God's instructions to go back home because his goal was to go back to Bethlehem, the place where Jesus was born. What better place to raise Jesus other than his birthplace? And more than that, it was David, Israel's greatest king, homeland. However, when they got back to Bethlehem, they discovered that they had a new king by the name of Archelaus. And he was more vicious than his father, who was King Herod. So Joseph had to recalibrate his route from Galilee to Nazareth. I'm going somewhere. And let me real quickly give you the context so you can appreciate the content of this message. Nazareth was the last place that Joseph and Mary wanted to go to because Nazareth was the place of stigma and embarrassment for them. In Nazareth, the, the perception of Jesus was a point of conflict and disgrace because Mary walked down the aisle pregnant and nobody really knew who the baby daddy was because sometimes can I preach to somebody for a second sometimes when God is directing your path you can't explain to everybody what God is doing oh I wish I had one person in here you can't always explain why you are making the moves that you're making because sometimes God put a muzzle on you and instead of Joseph telling everybody in Nazareth what was going on Joseph said I'm gonna follow what God has directed me to do and even if nobody understands me I'm gonna do what God said to can I help somebody in here today you gotta learn how to follow what God said to because when people get tired of you God is going to be the one that's going to take care of you can I get a witness in here but listen to this they end up back in this place of stigma and, and in this place that they didn't want to be because they know how they left with unresolved questions unanswered but I'm going to stay there because some of us may have made strategic moves in our lives to put the past behind us just to later discover that God in his infinite wisdom will strategically direct us back to the place that we wanted to avoid which means a life of elevated obedience doesn't mean that you would always go to the place of our preference Joseph and Mary had to learn how to live in the tension between personal preference and godly prerogative Nazareth was known for nothing good nobody known ever came out of Nazareth everybody knew that Nazareth was a breeding ground for the ill religious the criminal and the convict why my brothers and sisters did God direct them back to a place like Nazareth which begs for the question today what is God up to when we're called upon to elevate our obedience and that obedience is outside of our personal preference why would God direct us to live in the tension between our preference and his purpose here it is and I only got one point and I'm gonna take my seat simply because there's a prophecy over your life to be fulfilled why would God make me do something that don't make sense because there's a prophecy over your life that must be fulfilled 
help me preach somebody and look at your neighbor and say there's a prophecy over your life to be fulfilled don't look at how I look now don't look at where I am now I am where I am and look like I look because I'm on my way to my prophecy fulfill me look look verse 23 said so was fulfilled what was said through the prophet that he would be called a Nazarene then in Isaiah 11 and 1 in the New Living Version it says a shoot will come up out of the stump of Jesse from his root a branch will bear fruit the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord and he will delight in obeying the Lord now I want to teach for a second the Hebrew word shoot is the word net sir somebody say net sir it's the root word from which we get Nazareth it refers to something that's thin something that's insignificant something that's insubstantial Isaiah wasn't just describing the name of the Messiah's place of upbringing but he was also dealing with the character of the place that Jesus would be brought up in and y'all wondering why I'm getting excited because I already know the end of this story and when he said that when the prophecy came out that he would be a Nazarene it was to help people like you and for me because he was born in Bethlehem which was a beautiful place but he was brought up in a place called Nazareth which was a horrible place it doesn't matter where you were brought up but what really matters is that God has his hand on your life look 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 watch this watch this watch this there is because I done jumped over the wagon a little bit but there is no place somebody better hear this because I want to help somebody's life there is no place that you will ever arrive at uh, where God is not actively somebody say actively where God is not actively actively fulfilling a word that he's already spoken over your life come here brother pastor I heard what you said I don't like what you said do you know much hell I've been catching pastor I don't like what you said you know what's all this stuff I'm going through pastor I don't like what you said but you ain't catching it yet it doesn't matter where life drops you it's dropping you there because there's a prophecy that God has already spoken over your life wait a minute in other words in plain English there's a promise hanging over your life why don't you look at the promises of God look at your neighbor and say there's a promise hanging over your life and every place that life drops you God had a promise waiting on you I feel like preaching and not reading no more because I'm just getting these emails you've been through hell but there was a word in hell that God needed you to hear you've been in the courthouse but there's a reason why you in the courthouse you've been through trouble but there's a reason why you went through the trouble you gotta learn that God's got you and he knows what he's doing listen listen it explains now it explains for me why so many of us were able to survive sister Marty we were able to survive in some tough places of our lives because God had already put his 
promise in the place where we thought we were going to fall apart. His promise was already there. Can I get a witness? Which means when you were in a dark place, God was keeping his promise when he said, I am your light and your salvation. When you were in a sorrowful place, God was keeping his promise and he said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is going to come in the morning. When you were in a weary place, God was keeping his promise. Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But, but they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Learn obey the voice of God he will hold you up God sit down and I'm definitely going to my seat but sit down God had a prophecy hanging over Jesus this is why I love the word of God this is why I love to study the word of God I found out today that Nazareth was noted in his own name as being insignificant but I'm so glad I was brought up in the projects but look at God you don't have to worry or be ashamed of where you came from God had something hovering over your life it's a word of healing it's a word of prosperity and you gotta learn to stop looking at where you are and learn to look to the hills from which come your help knowing that your help comes from the Lord God had a prophecy yeah hanging over Jesus but check this out y'all the only way that that prophecy could be fulfilled was that he was brought up in Nazareth I'm trying to help somebody there's somebody in here today you on the come up from an insignificant place <laughs> and now <laughs> there's somebody in here who can join pastor curry and say pastor <laughs> i can join the testimony line <laughs> because god brought me up from obscurity god brought me up <laughs> from the ghetto and the hood. God brought me up from the projects and poverty. God brought me up from dropouts and misfits. Just take a look at your life and see what God has already done. You ain't always had what you got right now. Stop trying to fake the funk. Stop trying to make people think you were born like you are today. You ain't always had a Mercedes Benz. There were some times when you had a hoop day and you parked around the corner so nobody could see you. But I'm so glad that we serve a God who can take you from nothing and make something out of your life. Do I have a witness? Yeah, yeah. Look, look. And I'm finished. But listen to me. This is why 90% of the time when I'm preaching to you, that scripture comes to my mind. Greater is he 
that's in me than he that's in the world had you known and pastor curry ain't by himself but had you known some of the stuff that i had to go through to get to where i am come on somebody there are people in here who can tell you the truth i had to go through heartaches i had to go through lonely nights i had to go through being misunderstood i had to go through go through i had to go through go through every time i thought things were getting better things got worse I had to go through I had to go through but I'm so glad that every enemy that tried to take me out every liar that tried to lie on me I'm so glad that God had his hand his hand over my life and because he had his hand on my life no weapon that was formed against me were able to prosper I don't know who I'm preaching to but I feel like telling you obey what God say and if you obey God will my 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 what a mighty word from the lord i'm strengthening my life by strengthening my obedience our obedience matter not so much unto man but unto god and god is not contrary to his word i pray today that you receive the word of god today and if you're out there and you don't know the lord that's the first line of obedience you really need to line up with how do you live a life without the Lord? You're just walking in a circle and going nowhere. The Lord is calling for you to now line up with his word. Will you be obedient to his word today? Will you be obedient to his call today? Will you be obedient to his voice today? If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, and I want to thank the one who called me this week and said I gave my life to the Lord I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. All you have to do is say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for I have sinned and fallen short of your word. Save me, deliver me and set me free. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Once you've said that prayer and you believed it from your heart, you are saved. According to the word of God, if man confess with his mouth and believe in his heart, he shall be saved. So I pray that you heard the word today. And now that you have given your life to the Lord, that you will call the church and say, I would like for someone to help me as I walk out my profession. God is a good God. For all of you who desire to be a part of the Ezai and Fair Church, I know that we are not inside the physical building. But you have a golden opportunity right now. You can call the church and tell the receptionist that, hey, I want to be a part of the Ezai and Fair Baptist Church. And they will be glad to receive your information, give it to the deacons. And at the appropriate time, we will connect and we will walk up the King's Highway together. We thank God for all of you today. We pray that God has blessed you with the word of God. I'm getting ready to run outside now as we get ready to start our first service this is the second, this is the second service of a drive-in, but it's our, and it's our second service of the day. The first one started at five this morning, and this is the second service of the day, and I hope that you will join us as we're going to praise the Lord in our drive-in worship celebration. Until my next telecast, may the God, Lord God bless you real good.